Rob thinks he's running the show, and Coach thinks he's running the show. But I'm going to take control of that. They want to play rough. I can play rough. King Rustall can get rid of the machete. <laughs> this is going to be wonderful because it's not just going to be the machete. Oh, Boston Rob likes that hat, don't he? I think he will go nuts without his little bee hat. I don't even like the Boston Red Sox. It's the Houston Astros, baby. For the first time since season eight, Survivor features a cast of 20 returning players that span all the way back to season two up through season 19. We have heroes, villains, and a lot of goofballs. Can Survivor pull off what it tried and failed to do in All Stars? Or is history bound to repeat itself? Let's find out. Number one, the thematic twist. The heroes are definitely the people I would rather play the game with. The villains are the people I've always been against. So this is perfect for me to be on the hero side and battle it out against these punks I don't like anyway. I'm a villain. I think villains are smarter than heroes because they don't mind stabbing somebody in the back to get where they want to get. It's a fact, it's a proven fact. Google it. Just like in fans versus favorites, pitting two types of players against each other is brilliant. Not only does that label help craft a satisfying narrative, it also pushes people to either accept what they are given or work hard to reject it. Either way, it pays off in spades this season, even more so than in Micronesia. The heroes versus villains storyline dominates the show and ultimately affects how everyone plays and who they vote for to win it all. On its face, the idea is corny. How many real life villains have played on Survivor throughout the first 19 seasons? A handful at most. But the idea of heroes and villains from an audience's perspective is brilliant, and it is a twist they absolutely should do again with the right cast. The thematic twist for Survivor, Heroes vs. Villains, scores a perfect 10 out of 10. Number two, production quality. You writing your letter to Russell, buddy? Yeah. Russell, this is a huge turning point in this game. Just by competing against you and the few handshakes we've had, I feel like I can trust you. We will most likely merge in 10 people and then you will be completely safe with us. Our five plus you will remain strong till the girls are done with. This is your chance to show you're not a villain. I'll put that at the end right here. Good. I think it's really crazy to give Russell the idol. You don't know what's going on over there. He could be in with the girls for all we know. This is Survivor history. Oh my gosh. If we win, I'm gonna try to give Russell my hidden immunity idol. Based on me guessing that he's on the outs, which I really feel like he is. Or this is our chance. That'll give us the numbers going into the merge. Last season, we saw way too much Russell Hans. So this season, it felt like a welcome relief to have him toned down in the edit even though he still has the most screen time of anyone here. Survivor's back in Samoa again, but for a season as epic as this, a new location is not needed. We're not really concerned about that. We see suffering in the rain, we see challenges returning from seasons past, and we even see so many storylines connect that work on a surface level in this season, but are extremely cool and even go deeper for the hardcore fans who remember what these 20 returnees did prior and how that affects this game this season. There were some missed opportunities that stopped this category from being perfect, like the lack of Colby and Jerry becoming friends that was left out of the edit. And the big question I have, why did Amanda and Parvati not reconnect? Clearly something happened and we didn't get the whole story. This is a season along with season 40 where I would love for the show to go back and re-edit all the episodes between the premiere and the finale to add in whatever was left out that is interesting. It would be great as an exclusive cut on their streaming service. That's how much I want to watch this season again. For Survivor Heroes vs. Villains, the production quality scores a 9 out of 10. By the way, did you know that Patreon is now free to sign up for? That's right, Patreon is the place where you can watch everything I make months early and even suggest video ideas and pick what I make. If this interests you, then check out the link in the description. Thank you for your support. Number 3. Strategic Play I don't even have to find idols. People are actually giving me idols. You don't hand the enemy the idol. Especially when his name is Russell Hands. You don't do that. That's a no-no. Play the idol tonight. For sure. To save yourself. Save myself. Because clearly, you're on the outside of an all-devouring female alliance. Right. I put that part in myself. I can't believe he's writing all this. Stuff. He's telling me what to do. He's, he's giving me pointers. How do you give the idol king an idol? Here, Mr. Russell, here's an idol. This one's just for you. Well, thank you. You know what? I think JT just handed me $1 million. Hey, I guess he can afford it. Hopefully I can trust you and you're not truly a villain. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> Let's do this together. See you soon. BFF forever. <laughs> XOXO, JT. Destroy this right when you finish reading. <laughs> 
JT gave Russell his heart today. And Russell is just gonna stab it a million times, <laughs> a million times over, and hand it to me. And I'm gonna eat it. <laughs> As you just saw in that clip, all the strategy is not good this season. Far from it. JT's idol, Tyson getting himself voted off, Russell burning Danielle unnecessarily, and so many more moves were so, so dumb. And yet, so many moves were great. Who can forget Parvati's double idol play or Rupert's infamous rock? I don't mind when things don't work out as it is a lot more fun just watching players not sit on their hands and swing for the fences even if it ruins their own game. Candace becoming the Judas of her tribe and flipping was so dumb and yet so entertaining. Almost every episode featured someone trying to make something happen and what more can I ask for from players being given their second or third chance to win it all? Tomorrow we make our apologies but tonight we make our move. I give the strategic play of Survivor Heroes vs. Villains a perfect 10 out of 10. Number 4. The Characters Coach will delegate, you do this and I'll do this and we'll go do that, but then when you look, Coach is gone two miles out. Sander, you only mentioned me in that, and I don't know if it's a jibe at me, but that's a bunch of bull. I collected firewood for three hours, thank you very much. Nobody's out there collecting firewood like I am. I've been working hard around camp, and I resent you for saying that. In fact, why do you think we have the worst shelter in Survivor history? Because like herding cats. Sandra tried to call me out and drive up tonight, and it was just very disheartening. I'm human. I'm sensitive. I'm probably more sensitive than most people. I just hide it behind a lot of things that I've done and accomplished and behind a lot of machismo. It's going to be all for nothing. It's that one that Sandra said tonight that was not even true, man. There's never been somebody like me out here, and there's never going to be anybody like me again. I did noble things out here, and I look ignoble. All of this, man, I don't need it. I'm the man, and I don't need anybody to tell me or validate that. Why doesn't anybody ever say anything good about me? Am I that bad of a person, man? Was there a dud in this bunch? We have Sugar, Colby, Rupert, JT, Amanda, Sri, Tom, James, Stephanie, and Candace on the Heroes Tribe. And while I do question Candace being here, they all made their mark this season, either as a hero or a villain. They were all memorable, and while some embraced being a hero, like Rupert and Colby, some just wanted to be a villain, like JT and Candace. Whereas the villains saw Randy, Boston Rob, Sandra, Parvati, Russell, Coach Tyson, Daniel DiLorenzo, Jerry, and Courtney. I think Danielle and Tyson were questionable choices that would have been better replaced by Corinne Kaplan in Fair Play, but I understand why that didn't happen. Check out my secrets video about the season to learn the details. Again, everyone here delivered, casting nailed it, and it made even the most boring strategic sections of this season lively due to these big characters. The character score gets twice the weight, and the characters here score a perfect 10 out of 10. Number five, the winner. You know why everybody wants to take you to the end? Because I already won and they'll win against me. Yeah. But I don't care, I'll take the $100,000 because I knew I wasn't going to win again. And no matter what, in any circumstances, I'm keeping Sandra. I think she might get Courtney's vote and that's it. So I'm going to use Sandra for me to win a million dollars. She can't okay. beat me. I want you to find the three because I think I can beat you for the million. All right. Straight up. I'll take the 100000 You know how I feel. Russell won immunity. So essentially, I have to do whatever uh, Russell says because he's wearing the idol. I'm feeling wonderful because regardless, Russell's keeping me around because I'll never get a single vote. But I don't know about that. We have a split in the fan base when it comes to Sandra. Some fans understand that Survivor is only about getting to the end and convincing the jury to vote for you. And that's it. That's how Sandra won twice, even coming within one vote of a perfect game. While others seem to think that the flashy moves that make for good TV are what Survivor's all about, and in a way, they're both right. Survivor at its core is a game, but it is a TV show we're watching. If everyone played like Sandra, it would be boring. Sandra strategically made friends, which doesn't make for exciting television. She was very sassy, and she didn't seem at all changed from 13 seasons ago, but the show did her no favors by hiding her up until episode 8. Where was Sandra throughout the pre-merge? Being overshadowed by bigger, more outspoken characters, that's where she was. However, she played a game that earned the respect of people who wanted to see themselves in the winner, and like in Pearl Islands, she nailed it here again. Sandra's winning game and story gets a 6 out of 10. So is Survivor Heroes vs Villains worth watching? Yes, but only after having watched the seasons prior to it. It can be enjoyable by itself, but that build up having seen the season these players hail from adds so much depth to it and helps us understand as an audience why they do what they do with some exceptions that I mentioned earlier. This is a top tier season that will be hard to beat 
And for me, Survivor Heroes vs. Villains overall score is a 9.2 out of 10. Tune in next time as we go to a new location with a new twist in Survivor Nicaragua. Thanks for watching and doubly thanks for liking and subscribing. See you all next time. I'm like a dream.